We are back. We're joined by Marcus McGee, who just had an impressive knockout victory at UFC Vegas 84. Marcus, how are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about yourself, Jesse? Uh, I'm doing awesome. I'm super impressed by your performance. Just tell me how you're feeling. I mean, that was the, that was pretty much flawless. I mean, you had I have some notes on it that I want to talk to you about, but just other than, you know, diving into the logistics of it, uh, just how are you feeling about that performance? I mean, it couldn't have gone any better, right? You know, I'm definitely blessed for the performance for sure. I definitely still critique myself, you know, pretty harshly. And I I definitely think there's still a lot to learn, uh, still a lot of growth, uh, which is exciting, right? That's the exciting part of what we do, you know, no matter how great you do, no matter how the outcome is, there's always work to be done. Yeah, no. And I, when I mentioned I had notes, I wasn't saying that I had criticism. I was actually, I had, I was, I had some curiosities because I was really impressed with the way that you were using your feet. You were sort of, um, you, you, the way you were using footwork, you, you were sort of going back and forth around him. And I just wanted you to sort of talk about uh, just what your strategy was in that fight and how you sort of, it seemed like you were just constantly setting traps. I was watching you closely. Like this, he's, he's setting these traps that are, that are really interesting. I just wanted you to sort of walk through what your game plan was. Yeah, so you know that's what it what it is. I'm always trying to set traps uh, on the fly. I do, I, you know, I, I I catch myself liking to be in front of guys too because I feel comfortable there as well. But uh, I have uh, good footwork, you know. I think that people commend me on that a lot. It's one of the things that separate me from other guys is as put where I am, where I put myself, and then always being able to change it up if I need to. Right, I'm not putting myself uh, out of place. Right, so. That's why I like to move my feet. I like to so that I have six different options based off of where I'm at, opposed to only having one option. I have to throw the jab here. I have to throw the right hand here. I have to throw the left hand here. Uh, I don't really like the idea of limiting myself there. So uh, that's where the footwork comes come, comes into play, and it's something that we've really been working on. Yeah, I guess I have to. The the, the really important question I have to ask you is: is uh, did you? I know that you said that you've sort of taken a step back. Uh, but did you did you have a celebratory blunt afterwards? Did you did you smoke anything to celebrate after all your hard work paid off or no? <laughs> always. Yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. Definitely did. You know, yeah, uh, always got to enjoy a little bit of cannabis. You know, honestly, yeah. I don't smoke as much as I used to. I'm a big right. cannabis uh, fan. Uh I, I was in the cannabis industry for about almost 10 years and uh, I still do grow. But over time, my uh, my I just I smoked so much before that it became something that was mastering me. Right. And uh, I don't like the idea of it being mastered by anything other than God, you know, and uh, actually getting it, getting I got into the Bible just because I had to make sure because I'm in a spiritual place right now. that I've been getting really better about it, and I had to look in there and see if there's anything that tells me not to smoke. And then there's nothing that did. So I was happy yeah. about that. Uh, but it did say, you know, don't let things master you, which is funny because right. that's what I was already feeling anyways. But yes, we did get to smoke some good gelato. Yeah, it, it, it comes from the earth. It's all natural. So, you know, I, I think I think you'd be forgiven for that. Um, <laughs> uh, so that being said, you know, you're like you're three and oh now you're, you've you've kind of taken the UFC by storm. I mean, how soon till we get you a ranked opponent? Like what's next for you? You know, I still think I got pretty good time before I get to the ranked opponents. You know, I, yeah, I, I, I'm super thankful for the work I've been able to give. I'm, I'm super thankful for being able to get, create what we've been able to create. But that being said, I know I have a lot of work to do. Uh, and I want to prove myself, not just to others, but to myself as well, that, uh, that, that when you work diligently toward whatever you're trying to go for and you do it within, with good intention, that, uh, it's more fruitful. So, uh, I think there's a lot of great, Phantom weights that are definitely way up above uh, where I am as far as their work that they've put in. And I'm willing to create that resume to do that. So next, I would just like to fight in front of a crowd. That'd be great. I'm not necessarily yeah. overly concerned about opponents. You know, I, I believe that the UFC will find a great opponent uh, who will be perfect for the timing, you know. And my biggest thing is just it'd be great to get in front of a crowd and 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 check that one off, check that box off as well. Right. I'm I'm looking something up right now. Hold on. How does um March 9th sound to you? Your teammate Sean O'Malley is fighting for the UFC Bantamweight title. Would you be ready by March 9th to fight in front of a crowd by any chance? <laughs> I don't really I honestly if I don't that's not necessarily on my on my to-do list, you know. I'd yeah, yeah, yeah. go in April. Uh, okay. I feel like March 9th is a quick turnaround. That's That is that is away. quick, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, my whole thing too is like uh you know, enjoy the time when you're in it. Like, I don't want to take too much time off, but also I don't want to rush, right? I feel like guys, they get in this crazy rush where they feel like they just need to need to rush things. And 
one of the things I've been telling myself is like, I do not want to rush this. There's no rush, you know. I'm still young enough. I don't need to rush it. I need to I need to do it right, right? Fight the right guys at the right time. I would still like to have a, a, a busy year, you know. Fight four times would be great, but it doesn't necessarily need to be rushed, you know. Well, you fought three times since April, so that would put you at a, you know, if you fought in April, you'd basically, one calendar year, you would basically, uh, you, you'd get those four fights in. Um so speaking of your teammate, Sean O'Malley, I, mean, I only mentioned that because obviously, you know, it's, it's well known at this point that you guys trained together and Sean O'Malley's fighting Cheeto Vera for the UFC Bantamweight title. Obviously, you guys have trained together. He's your teammate. How do you see that fight going? What's your prediction? You know, I, I think Sugar's is going to get the job done. Uh, I said finish. I do think he has the capabilities of getting the finish, uh, but it's going to be a very hard fought finish, right? Uh, because uh, Cheeto is one of those guys that you're going to have to basically, you know, you have to put him completely out before he's done. So it'll be hard. But I do think I do think it's going to be a very competitive fight. You know, I have all the faith in all the tools that Suge brings to the table. Um, but Cheeto is there for a reason as well. He has done his work. He's very diligent, very hardworking, family man, you know, great fighter. Yeah. Like he has a lot of great attributes that are going to, that he's going to carry right into that cage with him. So Sugar's going to have to have his eyes on beat and beat strong that whole fight. But you know, I'm definitely rooting and, uh, and my, I'll be in Shug's corner for sure. So they, they, they sort of have become rivals because of, uh, obviously Cheeto beat Sean, you know, but they, they, they also both, they're, they both partake in the cannabis too. Could you see these guys becoming friends after this fight? Do you think that they'll bury the hatchet and that they'll be able to be cool with each other after this fight? They can finally settle some things, maybe smoke a blunt, enjoy some time together, and they can finally put this all behind them? Or do you think that there's no chance of that happening? I always think there's a chance of that happening, right? You know, yeah. like... Uh, this is just the fight game, you know what I'm saying? And uh, all that aside, we are just trying to live our dreams, support our families, build an empire. We're all people, we all come from nothing and we're trying to create something, right? So I definitely think that this is something that they could put behind them, you know, especially when you go to battle with somebody, it changes things. You know, you get in there, whether you have uh, animosity toward them or not, you bleed with somebody, you sweat with somebody, you breathe hard with somebody. It changes how you feel about that person and your respect for that person, you know? And that's how I yeah. generally feel in this game and period. I feel like that's something that separates us from other sports is that, uh, you know, we get to have a really, really, uh, I guess I would say intimate, uh, intimate moment with another, with these other guys, you know? So, being that O'Malley's in your division, if you ever go on, like, like let's say a couple of years from now, you get a couple of, uh, you know, big ranked fights. You know, I know he's your teammate. Is that something that you think about? Like, if you'd ever have to fight somebody like Sean, or is that a fight you would turn down if it, if it came to you? Well, we think about it, you know, we think about it just because yeah. everybody else out there. And they've, you know, then, uh, 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 what's his, uh, you know, Aljamain Robin Aljo. Had that whole issue. Yeah, that issue, but it's not something that I'm looking forward to. You know, you know, yeah. I mean, it's not even something that I want to entertain until it comes to that point where, like, it's there, right? Because again, it's not something that I, I wouldn't be offended with anybody. I wouldn't be offended uh, if, if at that level, at that high level, if somebody was like, "No, man, I'm going to fight you because we're trying to build this together." I wouldn't be offended or mad at them. But not everybody feels that same way, you know. And I definitely wouldn't want to put that over a relationship that we've built 10 years. You know, we've been, and at that time, it'd be even longer in that relationship that we built 10 years. Right. Money is only so important, right? Legacy and, and, and everything that we've done is so much more important than that. So I'm not necessarily mad at guys that would fight each other. You know, I don't think that's a problem either. We all fight. We fight each other anyways. You mean to tell me if we go fight and make a million dollars together, that's a problem? Like, you know, right. but you know, uh, not everybody feels that same way. So um, but in my mind, yeah, no, it's not something that I really want to entertain or, or think to entertain at all. Uh, I would yeah. prefer, I preferably never want to be in that situation. <laughs> Fair enough. 